shit. Hi, everyone, and um, thank you for joining me here on um, Atopico Arts Instagram for um, the Artist in Isolation series that they're doing. <sighs> uh, we've just got one person in right now, so I'm going to ramble on for a little bit until we have a few more people join the session. Um... My name's Janine Beattie, and I'm the creator of Keepsakes Canada. And my art practice or business or however you wanna look at it is that um, I take your clothing or blankets or whatever, something that's significant to you, and then I create a keepsake out of it. Generally, those keepsakes are bunnies or bears, so for example, popular one is people will keep their hospital blankets um, when they have babies and then look at me to make a bear out of it. Or I also do bunnies, little cute bunnies. Um, so those are some examples. Here's a, another one. This is out of a cottage blanket, but I'm sure like most of you have had grandparents with these cottage blankets or whatever so um I've also had people donate like when people um pass away and they want keepsakes made out of them for the family members um so there is like a real kind of nostalgia aspect um to making these little guys and um and yeah and so that's what I normally do and uh I've been a member at Arts Etobicoke um, for just over a year now and uh, I find it's a really good membership uh, to have. I would totally recommend um, having it. They're super supportive of their artists and they just run a bunch of really good programs and so um, Arts Etobicoke has been a uh, really integral and integral part of the arts practice as well participating in their Christmas market was really successful so uh, I would totally endorse them that way and um, and I've known about Arts Etobicoke since I moved here in 2018 and was um, just kind of looking for uh, resources as an artist um, they were one of the first ones that I found so um, Okay, uh, this is supposed to be an artist tour, but honestly, I live in a two bedroom apartment with my daughter and my husband, and so I don't really have like a studio per se. I have a kitchen table that we don't eat at, and I use it as my office slash studio. So I'll give you a tour of that and what that looks like. So just give me a sec here, I'm gonna turn you around. So the studio tour is pretty brief. Um, this is what having a studio in a two bedroom apartment with your child and your husband looks like. Um, I make these like little macrame guys, uh, little plants here. Um, so that's that. And then uh, this is my easel with my painting set up. And then uh, my paintbrushes and plants live in the um, here with the window and um, and then I have like a child's little easel so that when I want to paint and entertain my preschooler uh, she can paint as well although she paints a lot faster so uh, it's Um, and then when I have everything pulled out to make something, it looks like this. It's, a, it's honestly, it looks like this. That's my kitchen, or sorry, that's my living room. So this little basket has all my like notions and um, things and it goes into a closet really well. Uh, so a lot of my studio practice is um, being able to pack things up and put it away so that when company comes over, they don't know. So things live in my Kia bags. Um, that's my stuffing for the projects that I do. And then um, I find... Um, 
it opens up when I need to use it and then I zip it up and close it away and put it in a closet when I'm not using it. And this is where all the magic happens, right here. That's the magic. And then just some other projects that I have on the go are sweaters. Um, so yeah. on today was just doing like a brief tutorial since my studio since my studio tour is so short I thought I'd do like a little tutorial on um, how to make kids masks because um, it's part of like it's kind of part of my practice to like reuse materials and repurpose them for other things so I thought it would apply if we would do it that way I will answer a couple questions though um, to keep consistency for these studio tours. So, um, the questions are, uh, how long have you been affiliated with Arts Etobicoke? And I've been a member for just over a year, but I've been participating in the programs and events since I moved here in 2018. And um, what is something people don't know about you? Uh, it, it, this is really simple, but it's just that my daughter and I share the same birthday. She was born on my birthday, and uh, I think that's like a pretty unique thing that we share that no one really knows about. And then what I do in my spare time um, when I'm not creating art. So I, um, I guess basically I just try and stay active, like do some yoga or go for a run or something. Um, but most of the time I just basically make art or sew or something. I like having projects on the go. Um, and then my go-to meal for gas. So this really just depends on the gas. Uh, I was a restaurant manager for a few years and worked as a server and bartender for many years. So, uh, I'm a pretty good cook. And um, so yeah, I just really cater to whatever guest is coming over. Uh, one of my go-tos is like zucchini noodles with basil sauce and chicken, but I wouldn't make that for a vegan guest. I'd probably go with like vegan tacos or something like that, but um, it's pretty wide variety, the things that I can make. And then uh, most meaningful art experience you've had. So I don't know if you know Iris, Housler, uh, but in 2006 she took over a house in on Robinson Street in downtown Toronto, um, just kind of at the corner of Bathurst and Queen. And it was the most meaningful art experience I've ever had. Uh, she transformed this house, uh, like she built sculptures that went up through floors. Uh, and then she created this like whole fictional story about this recluse artist that um, that had never shown in galleries or anything like that and he had like escaped the war in Germany and um, was obsessed with rabbits because that was like the one source of food that you could um, house that was quiet and so there's all these sculptures that went up through the entire house of rabbits and made out of cement and stuff like that and then there was like another room where it was about like his wife and his wife's clothing and all this stuff and so you tour the house and then at the end there's these people in these white jackets and they ask you if the house should be preserved for um you know for uh sorry culturally preserved um, even though he never showed it in a gallery and, um, and like was never really like honored or, um, by, you know, the canon. And so does it count as art? It was like the big argument. And, uh, I just thought like that was so great. And it was such a hoax too, because in the end it was just like her, a piece of her artwork. And so when you went and you did the tour, you didn't know that. You really thought it was like a recluse artist that the city of Toronto was trying to figure out whether or not to preserve the house. And then this is just like her form of art, which just I, I find is like so mind blowing. And like um, she does some other pieces with like hoarding and hoarding of material and like, you know, the number of years they've kept the material and how old the material is and the antique and stuff and then just how it's categorized and like, like a museum does. 
but that it's not recognized by anybody else. So the argument is, is it art? And I think it's so genius. But then also as like someone who hoards materials, I like really identify with that art practice. So um, yeah, Iris, I'll like throw down her I don't know. Why did I decide on an arts career? Um, mm, that's a good question. I guess because um, I don't really try and do anything I'm not good at. So I've always just pursued things that I am good at. And like arts has always been like something I've excelled at. Um, whether it's sewing or painting. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> so yeah that's basically it is like I don't really try to improve upon things I'm not good at so I've always just kind of like followed the path of things I am good at uh, turn off commenting request go live oh sorry guys I can't comment I don't know why it's so anyways let's go back to the tutorial uh, Iris Householder, look her up. Uh, she's on Wikipedia. She's also Toronto based now, even though um, I think she was born in Germany, um, to be fair. So, here we go. Here we go. We're going over to the tutorial now. So, this is what I use as my um, like pattern. And then this is what I make for kids. So, uh, this is made out of baby blankets. We got the two baby blankets here. It's reversible. And uh, these were just in my, my daughter's closet. And so it goes over a child's head like this. And then over their mouth like this. And then you would tie it behind their head. And with a smaller head, you would get a bow. And then you just adjust over the face. Uh... Oh, the, um, oh, the idea for making keepsakes actually came out of, um, just getting in, like having a kid and then getting into a kid's community. And, um, one of my friends knew that I was good at sewing. And so she sent me the bear, um, pattern and, um, and then from there I made bears for her out of baby blankets and then she posted it on Instagram or no, sorry, Facebook. And then another friend asked for bears to be made and then she posted on Facebook and then it just kind of snowballed from there and people just kept posting every time they had bears made and then someone else would come and ask me to make them and um, and it's just been snowballing like that now for four years so and I, I pretty much always have an order on the go so it, that's how it happened so here we go guys okay so what you need to know about making your own mask is you need to know about the lighter test. So for instance, I've made this mask for my daughter and it just goes over your head, covers your mouth, and then this would tie behind your head, cover your nose and your mouth. Hold on. Here we go. And then this is double layered because it's reversible and you're going to take a lighter once you make your mask and if you can make the lighter go out, your mask is not effective for COVID from what I've seen. I'm not a doctor and, um, and like this will be my, um, yeah, like this doesn't replace hygiene or hand washing or avoidance. Um, and, and, and obviously I'm not a doctor like on COVID, but you will then just take a, a coffee filter, cut the sides off, and then you leave the top of your mask open. You put the coffee filter in, and then this makes it like reusable and washable too. You want to wash it, take the co coffee filter out and, um, you know, replace it and then 
put a new coffee filter in, wash it, and you're good. Okay, so then you get back up over, and then the lighter test. <laughs> So that, that's really effective. Um, another one I have, and so like this is more fun for kids. You get to look like you're a bank robber. And so like that's more fun. And if you have like an older child, I would say this is probably an okay thing. The only thing with this one is like your hands can get up in here. So if you can explain to your child not to touch your face um, this is a really good one too so and that is because of the polyester materials that I've used if I had made if I had made this same mask using this material we would have to put a coffee filter in but because of the polyester and the blends uh, we're good to go right now so um that there's kind of your two options try not to tie your hair in it um uh the dryer sheet okay so i ha i don't know about the dryer sheets just because the detergents on dryer sheets is a good question and honestly i don't i don't know i'm not an expert on these things um i would maybe just avoid the dryer sheets and go for coffee filters just based on like the scents and detergents and stuff because those can really irritate children um but uh give it a shot i don't know try it out if um you know the scents are the detergents bother your kids go to coffee filters so those are the two that I'm going to demonstrate today but I just wanted to say um, some other ideas that I had or like okay so I made I made an outfit with a masking or like a, with a matching mask and so this was the match that or the mask that it matches the outfit and so I did it to go around your ears and this is the first one that I made that goes around your ears. And I didn't realize, like, it makes your ears pop. Like, it pops out your ears a lot. So then I saw this, like, little back band idea where you just take a piece of material and sew two buttons on either side. And then it gives, like, an attachment that doesn't rely on your ears. So you can just like, and then it takes the pressure off your ears. Um, so I thought that was a really good idea. I've also seen where it's like a headband with buttons here and then it takes it off your ears. So then you don't have to worry about it popping up your ears. Um, and <laughs> this was made out of one of my mom's bras. So she gave me her bra and then I'll just show you, like you can stick your whole head in a bra and then, well, depending on the bra. And then, yeah, lighter test again. So, uh, yeah, if you have an old bra or something, that's a good material you can just cover up. And then, um, cause I'm constantly taking apart clothing, I have shoulder pads also shoulder pads work and uh, now I'll just like show you a couple different materials so I thought this was like really great for kids too this is just in a sleeve of a t-shirt arm um, medium t-shirt arm or whatever but like if you're a kid and your head's a little smaller than mine then you got like yourself a little like gangster mask just out of like a t-shirt but again you depend like it's not going to pass this test <sighs> but um it could be a good pattern to use like i like the look of it a lot so maybe 
it's a good pattern to use just um, you're gonna want to double up maybe put um, like a another layer underneath to pass the lighter test and just when you are using this as a pattern remember you're gonna want to find a uh, material that's the same kind of stretchiness if you find something that's not as stretchy it's not gonna go over your head and it won't work but that was just an idea and then just to show you some other um, this is like that really fuzzy stuff that a lot of kids things are made out of so this will work oh wait hold on yeah that one works but then here's a onesie and then we'll just take the leg which is double layered The cotton blend your breath goes through so you'll need like a coffee filter or some other filter for that so yeah so that's that's kind of like the different mask options so for the two that I'm gonna demonstrate um oh yeah so then this is this is what I'm talking about with the polyester so this guy's totally 100% polyester Here we go. Whew. This isn't covering my face that well, but the polyester just doesn't breathe, which we all know because we got, you know, like our body doesn't breathe in it, but. So this is like a little pocket sleeve that I have which I'm going to use that material to show you how to make one of the little badass cowboy um, masks for little kids to use. So I'm just turning this directly inside out after I sew it. So I haven't done a lot of hemming with it since it's going to get turned inside out and the, the raw edges will be on the inside. So I just cut two pieces of triangle and then I pin them together and then I've marked in the corners here where not to sew so that um, that's going to be where my ribbon goes through. And I really like, uh, like I've done here where it goes over the head and then is adjustable, like it slides up and down on it. Um, I I think that's pretty good for kids uh, for the coverage and then it just sitting on the base of their necks tied up uh, so that's how I've designed these things to work so yeah so um, pin two triangles together raw edges to raw edges because the raw edges are going to be inside once you turn it inside out mark here and here on each corner of the the bandana um, not to sew and then just throw it in there and three stitches forward three stitches back that knots your material go to the end and then lift your foot up pivot on the triangle Sew it back. Three stitches forward, three stitches back. And then pick it up, cut it. And then these little corner pieces. Three stitches forward, three stitches back. Get it to the end of the triangle here. And then down, pivot. Here we go. Adjust your foot sometimes. Hold on, sorry, my needle's just not participating in this. There we go. And then three stitches forward, three stitches back. And then take your pins out. Sorry, 
gonna pull it up. Just this is how I always do my safety test that things aren't in or pins aren't in children's things. Then just take one of the openings that you've decided not to close to run your string through. And you're gonna pull out. And I just have this like trusty stick. Um, so a good thing is, um, sorry, a chopstick, like from sushi. If you eat sushi and get takeout or Chinese food, save your sticks. And those sticks are great for pushing material through holes. So once you get most of your material out, then you can just pull it through like a ma magician. It. Oops. Okay. And then get it back into a triangle shape the other way. goes this way and then you can take your string which I'll show you how to make in just a minute and you put it through the openings where you didn't sew like that and over here like this and then it goes around the back of your head or your children's head, child's head, up like that, over the mouth, and then just tie and adjust it as you need it. Like that. And then we'll do the lighter test. So that's that's going to be effective. So that's if they like to look like train robbers. And then the other more like traditional medical looking mask here. So uh, I'll just sh show you how to do a hem real quick. So I've, I've had most of them for like TV time. But uh, it to do it, you're just going to Flip it over one centimeter. Take your iron, oops, and iron it down so it's nice and flat. Maybe give it a couple sprays. And then turn it over one more time. Same thing again. Iron, spray it, heat it. That makes a nice hem, so one centimeter, one centimeter, and then, oh, sorry, I just gotta restitch my machine here. There we go, real quick. And then again, uh, throw it under there, and then three stitches forward, three stitches back, all the way down. It, three stitches forward, three stitches back. There you go. And then you have it hemmed. So I've already done that with this piece. So you're going to put them back to back. And the reason that I hemmed these ones and these ones were raw is because these ones won't pass the lighter test. So we have to leave the top part open for the coffee filter to go in.
And then I've already created the string again. I'll show you how to do it just real quick. Cut off about three inches of material and then sew it down. This is a short one for TV time. But yeah, so you're gonna want like three inches of material, fold it in on itself, and then sew down is the trick. Take a safety pin and pin through the top like this. Push the safety pin down and then like we'll thread it through. And then pull the safety pin at the bottom this you just push the material back up and ta -da, that's how you make your ribbon and just remove the safety pin like that so I've already, I've already done that for TV time and Hold on a sec, it's telling me my battery's low. I'm just gonna plug it in. I've got a really old phone, so. Let's see here. Thanks for the vision. the top open so we can drop a coffee filter into it um, so and then we want to leave a spot for the ties at the bottom so we're gonna pin it like oops that's not a pin pin it in the middle And pass your machine over it. And then down the sides. Pin it or don't pin it, however you feel comfortable. thread I broke my thread there but at least I didn't break my needle so and then we'll do the other side real quick out again do the scrunch up test just make sure there's no pins in there for little children 
And then you're gonna take your string that you made, your pens away, and you're gonna run it through the little holes in the bottom that you have, like this, and then make a little loop. Bring it through the bottom. There you go. And I tie a little knot in them just for aesthetic, but it's not really necessary. And then, oh, like this one has a knot in the bottom, but I didn't stop it from coming out. And then you have like an adjustable little mask here that you're gonna put up over the head like that, and then cover the mouth and then tie and then it's adjustable like you can play around with how you want it adjusted on your kid's face and then just tie it in a bow in the back so again we're going to do the lighter test this is not like well like it, it'll cover your kid's face but the idea is that um you can't blow a lighter out from what i've heard Again, not a doctor. So you take your cult coffee filter, fold it in half, cut the sides off, and then you put it in the top of the mask. Choo, choo, choo. And this is why you leave the top open and sew the bottom. And then, choo, choo, choo. here we go again. And then um, that's that's a really good mask um, for your kid to have. So um, those are kind of the two different ones that I'm going to demo today. I'll let you know about. Um, and if anybody wants one, uh, feel free to message me. And then I'll just let you know about some other ideas I had that I haven't really. I haven't made anything for it, but I have ideas in the workings. So my daughter has an outlet mask that she likes to dress up with. And so I thought, well, maybe there's like a fun way to do it with a mask. It would have to open in the back. And, um, and then like your kid might just think that they're wearing like a fun superhero mask. So that's like an idea I've had where you would have like a zipper or an opening or something in the back. So there's an idea. Um, and then another one I had is, um, my daughter's got this like little um, Hello Kitty hat and I thought, oh, maybe we could like trim, trim this down and do it like this way or something. And then she'd have like Hello Kitty on her face. Um, and then these are just like, I don't know, like little crown things that I have like with the elastic bands and then you just put a crown on so I thought maybe it might be like a fun thing to do with like a princess crown and um, that way um but honestly I haven't um haven't got there yet so um you know if you have any ideas or you want anything custom made or something like that feel free to um, message me and I can try and um, develop those ideas a little bit further um, but yeah, uh, and then I'll just show you too, like, so for this mask here, um, it was this little girl shirt, and then I just took this as my pattern, and I, I just went like this, oh. Woo. and drew it out, and then I cut it, and then I, I hemmed the edges of it, and then I did the same on a little um, baby blanket that she had. So, so yeah, that's my tutorial. Does anybody have any questions? Um, 
another thing I do is repurpose clothing, which is why this tutorial kind of made sense to repurpose kids' clothing into masks. Um, so I took like an 80s business suit and I turned it into and a business shirt and then I turned it into like a little fun top. And it has a matching skirt and a matching COVID mask. Where did I put it? Boom. And so that's that. And yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, maybe just um. So yeah, so the thing to remember with um, making kids masks is um, you want to make them out of like so softer materials, I guess, but um, if the materials are strictly cotton, you're going to have to layer them because the um, polyester is really the non-breathable stuff. So if it's polyester blend and it passes the lighter test then you're good to go without layers and um, if it's like more like a cotton muslin blend that's really nice and soft for kids you're just gonna have to layer it up or like maybe input the um, coffee filter and um, yeah and then just some ideas that I've seen is like where there's like um, a headband and then you put the uh, buttons here and here to help attach the mask so that it's not hanging off your ears uh, and then um, like I showed you with there we go I keep losing it now but there's also like where you can put a headband with the buttons here and here so it relieves the pressure off your ears because I've heard that with like the elastics hanging on your ears all the time it can get um, sore or like they pop off or the other thing with a mask too this is why I like the adjustable strings is because if you're constantly touching your face to adjust the mask then it like defeats the purpose of wearing a mask so you want to have something that's going to fit pretty good and um yeah and and yeah that's it that's all I really I, and like like I said, like none of this replaces hygiene or washing or like avoiding um, situations that would have COVID in the first place. But uh, it's just like a really good way to um, be able to repurpose your kids' clothing um, and like maybe make it fun for them. I don't know. I hate to say fun, but I don't know. I think that like kind of like the stage coach, coach like cowboy stuff might make it a little bit easier to convince them to want to wear one maybe who knows who knows um yeah and uh that's it I kind of I guess I just talked too fast for what I had to talk about and oh one of the questions I didn't answer was do I think that community arts are important and yes I very much do think that community arts are important I am the program manager at Mural Roots and I spend um you know my time during the week programming community arts for um street art and murals and um, I think it's really good to educate and engage community and um, work on beautifying community while getting community members involved and having them um, participate and having their say involved in the artwork that gets created in their communities and so I think it's really powerful stuff to um, build and engage communities through art so I think that's super important and I think I will probably end it on that note. So thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any other questions, feel free to DM me at, oh 
Canada and uh, have yourself a great time. Stay safe, stay home, and uh, take care. Okay, bye. Is it going on? Sorry, guys, my phone's so old. Okay, great. <laughs>